Welcome to the White Rabbit YouTube channel. In today's episode, we will learn about Mel's second hole or Mel's hole part two. But first, let's do a quick recap of part one. So first we have Mel Waters living in the Manastash Ridge west of Ellensburg in the Washington state. This is an area that has a lot of UFO activity mysterious disappearances and paranormal activity. Surprisingly or not, this is where Mel's bottomless pit is found. He measured the pit to be at least 24 kilometers deep, but he did not reach the bottom. He spoke to neighbors who said there used to be columns all around it and that some have even claimed to see black beams of darkness shooting out of the hole like a black light flashlight emitting darkness to the heavens. Oh my God. Wanting to find out more, he contacted Art Bell on the Coast to Coast AM radio show where he told his story. Was it a portal to another dimension, a time portal, maybe a tunnel to the inner earth? Who knows? Anyway, he talked to Art Bell and broadcast the story to 10 million people listening worldwide. Surprisingly or not, when he returned to his property, the government had blocked access to his property claiming there had been a plane crash despite no obvious signs of one. Art got back in touch with Art Bell and gave him the update about being denied access to his property. And Art Bell told Mel that a local news crew had gone to the area to check it out and reported seeing a lot of military activity. Soon after, the government made a deal with Mel to lease his property for $250,000 a month, which equals $3 million a year. But he would have to sign a non-disclosure agreement and leave America forever. Mel did leave America. Mel went to Australia. But after being away only two years, he returned to America claiming to miss friends and family. Big mistake. Not only that, he agreed to go back on the Coast to Coast AM radio show despite signing the non disclosure agreement with the government. Another big mistake. And that is probably the most likely reason why he never showed up for the radio appearance. He disappeared and only reappeared 12 days later. He reappeared in a San Francisco alleyway with puncture marks in his arms, the taste of blood in his mouth because his back teeth had been removed and he didn't have ID, keys, money, or anything. When he finally did make his way back to the Manastash Ridge, he found that the government was suing him for illegal construction on his property, paved roads, electrical power lines, Mel lost everything and regretted ever calling the radio show. If you want to know the full story of Mel's first hole, including a secret underground military base and reptilian lizard people, please check out Mel's Hole Part 1. The link is in the description. As I mentioned in Part 1, the Basque had contacted Mel to help them investigate another bottomless hole in Nevada. And just so you know, the Basque are an ethnic group from a small area between France and Spain, and they settled in Canada and America in the 1800s and have been there ever since. The Basque specialize in sheep herding. As far as they know, the hole in their grazing area has been there for as long as anyone can remember. 
Unlike the first hole with a stone retaining wall, this one has a metal color with the whole edges being made of metal as far as the eye can see. The hole is warm to the touch and absorbs vibrations. Mel accidentally dropped a tool on the metal collar and it made no sound. The first experiment was to lower a bucket of ice into the hole about 1,000 feet or 300 meters. They also kept a bucket of ice on the surface as a control. When the surface ice had completely melted, they brought up the bucket and oh my God, the ice was no longer wet, had not melted and was warm to the touch. It had the consistency of salt. Then they tried to melt the ice over a fire. Not only did it not melt, but it caught on fire and continued burning for months. They continued sending different amounts of ice down the hole. Two thirds of the time, the ice melted and one third of the time, the ice was transformed. Later on, one of the Basque volunteered to go down the hole. Of course, the more sensible decision was made to send a sheep down. They put a sheep in a crate and it was whining and kicking as it got lowered down to 1,000 feet or 300 meters. Then it stopped. Everyone felt a humming sensation. Mel felt beyond extraordinary, like a religious moment. They left it for 30 minutes and brought it back up. The crate and the sheep looked exactly the same, but the sheep was dead. The Basque being shepherds decided to cut up the sheep to look inside. They said the sheep had been cooked from the inside. There was what Mel described as a giant tumor inside the sheep. Then the tumor started moving. They then cut open the tumor. Inside the tumor is what Mel described as a fetal seal, like a baby seal. It was attached to the tumor with an umbilical cord. It had the eyes of a human. It crawled to the edge of the table. Mel felt as though it wanted to get back to the hole. So they set it near the edge of the hole. The baby seal was slimy and smelled like ozone. They studied the baby seal and it seemed to study them for about two hours. Then the baby seal gave them a final look and jumped into the hole. Before going to Nevada, Mel was diagnosed with advanced cancer with only six months to live. But after this experience, the cancer was gone. He feels like the baby seal cured him. One of the Basque took one of the buckets of transformed ice back to his cabin to put in his stove to keep him warm. Bad idea. The ice pulled all the moisture out of the air. The cabin air was always dry. When boiling water, the steam would be pulled into the stove. One day, the stove crashed through the floor into the ground under the cabin, but the hole was still warm, so he continued using it for warmth. Two weeks later, his entire cabin collapsed. He went to stay elsewhere for a month, and when he returned, he found that the stove was five feet or 1.5 meters deeper in the ground and the sides of the hole were perfectly smooth. It was making a new hole. A giant crane got the stove out of the ground. Then 
they were visited by the baby seal. They felt a spiritual religious quality when in its presence. It communicated with them through the radio with beeps and clicks that they could understand. It warned that the ice is dangerous and it cannot fall into the wrong hands. The baby seal communicated that if the ice fell into the wrong hands, it would lead to the destruction of the planet. Mel agreed to return with recordings of the sounds, photos, and videos for Art Bell to examine and share. But of course, Mel was never heard from again. What do you think about Mel's first and second holes? Do you think it's a portal to another dimension? A tunnel to the inner earth? Let me know in the comment section. And just as every story I share, I'm not saying it's 100% true. I'm just telling a story and you can believe what you want. Uncovering the truth, one conspiracy at a time. See you next week on the White Rabbit YouTube channel.